Raiders here. This series now one to one here at Summit Esports broadcast of this best of three, and we're headed into game number three already right into the draft. Uh, my name is Sparris. I'm joined here by Claire for this final game, and things have been quite exciting. We had a pretty big stomp in game number one. That was Disco Spiders claiming that game, and then they bounced right back, uh, collected, maintained their composure, collected themselves, and brought it back there for a game two victory. And now, Claire, we're headed into game three. Are you excited? Are you ready for it? What's going to go down? I mean, I'm stoked for game three, really. Like... Corporate budget cuts really just showing back up in that second game. So they did have their ups and downs in that first game with just a bunch of issues and tech issues that were not related to League of Legends at all. But being able to show up with that sub in that game too is incredibly resilient and to show them like that they're they want to win. So exactly, and they may have momentum going into the game three and let's start talking about these picks here because we already are almost halfway through the draft already we have disco spiders now playing the vein this time around and the lilia so these are two very exciting champions that i am ready to see on the other side we have like full pro play composition coming through from CVC. We got Oren Sedge, uh, an excellent front line there to protect the Zeri and great scaling for them as well. This is sort of the, the top bot duo that Disco Spiders went for in game number one. So we got scaling. We also have scaling with the Vayne as well. But Lilia does nicely too. Uh, I think this is a fantastic pick into two of the tanks. Yeah, I mean, just looking at this composition here for the corporate budget cuts i mean they have great engage they have great uh, kiting and they have great damage with that zeri so being able to just cover all of their bases and they still have two picks left with that support and that um that mid laner so i'm curious to see what they do uh disco spiders opting to ban that oriana uh understandable as she is super strong at the moment and then that final ban of the corporate budget cuts banning that malphite which is also understandable as disco spiders does not yet have a crazy engage so malphite is definitely one of those champs that can that can engage super duper well yes exactly that unstoppable force is quite literally an unstoppable force at most moments of the game i like the two bans from disco spiders mitigating these two control mages in the Lissandra and the Oriana, things that could lock down their Lilia and their Vayne very easily. These are two champions with high mobility, great self peel, and they do excellent into tanks. I also think this Urgot pick against the Orn is turbo. Like I'm loving this tra this draft right now for Disco Spiders. Their red side counter draft is perfect. I don't know if they're picking these champions to counter what corporate budget cuts is went for on blue side, or if they're just like uh, coincidentally picking what they like and it counters it. But uh, I really like this draft, but uh, the Casio going to go over to CBC. This has had presence in all three games now and has looked quite strong for the majority of the series. And so this is a power pick being secured from CBC. I think we're in Claire for a banger game number three. Yeah, I completely agree. And looking at this, uh, the Disco Spiders uh, players last like win rates, it seems in like play rates, it seems that Disco Spiders is opting for a bunch of comfort picks. They just want to play characters that they're comfortable with. They don't want to do anything crazy, but like obviously these characters will still do a lot of damage and can do a lot of a lot of uh, combinations together. So I'm curious what they see in that mid pick to close this draft out. Yeah, so they're hovering the Silas here. This would actually be quite uh, another interesting pick in the sense that Silas does well here because he has fantastic ultimates to heist away. So pretty much any ultimate here is good. Terrac ult, fantastic. Uh, making pretty much your entire team invulnerable. Cast ult can be good. Zeri ult can be good. Sedge and Orn ult can set up these fights. There's lots of options here for this Silas and can keep these ultimates on a constant rotation. I think their matchups in terms of their lanes are good. 
uh, but if we look at the side of CBC, they have fantastic scaling. If they can escape maybe the early stages of the game and start to build themselves a lead and team fight the way they did last game so nicely, they punished the over aggression and the mispositioning from Disco Spider as well. If they do the exact same thing this game, especially with a composition like this that's so tight knitted in terms of a 5v5, they should be all set and ready for a game three win. Yeah, just corporate budget cuts. Um, in my opinion, choosing a much more like well-rounded composition of characters. Well, Disco Spiders choosing uh, champs that are much more like comfort picks, obviously, and just looking to play their game much more like kind of off-meta. Yeah, and sometimes comfort off-meta. That's what brings you wins in games it's like you can go for compositions that work well together and you see and but sometimes you're not necessarily the most confident on these champions that you're playing and you see this in all levels of play you even see it in the pro scene where some players refuse to play certain champions because they simply don't feel comfortable to bring them out on stage could be the case here it might be something that disco spiders have as sort of a trick up their sleeve like i am so confident on this lilia on this ergot and uh i think on top of that too like i've said this about twice now already inside of the champ select but i think the matchups are good for them as well i think it's going to be a hard fought game number three and i'm very excited to see how it all unfolds as we are soon to get into it yeah we're ready to cut to break whenever y'all are and then waiting for this yeah <laughs> Waiting for this game to start, we are going to cut right, uh, right to a break, and then right after that, we'll be hopping right onto the rift, and we'll see you then. Keep watching. Nice. 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 All right. How long do we got? Uh, they haven't even started the All right. like, lobby yet, so, like, you got some time, yeah. like oh, five minutes five minimum. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they just started picking, so like six minutes, maybe more, till game. All right. Um, so when this game ends, like Nexus explodes yes. and everything, um, we just, you know, give a quick little, oh, good game. Like they pull off the win, well done to them. And then we sign off. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing to, yeah. it'll just cut to a offline screen. Cool. 
All um, right. That sounds good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're just about to wrap up picks here, so. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, just loading in now. Uh, yeah! Yeah, game three! Game three, baby. <clears throat> Baker there? Just I, kidding. Did, I think not that's the, the sub. It says alt. He's a not, I think Baker's in Hangzhou for Asian games, if I'm not mistaken. No, I tried this team, actually. Yeah, oh, he's... shit, my bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You didn't know? I, I didn't. This stuff is new. Oh, it's crazy. 
I apologize to Thinker. <laughs> um, who wants to kick it off? Uh, oh, I, can, I can kick it off for us. You'll kick it off. Word. I'll kick You'll it kick them like off. A, like a messy. Ice washed. I could be messy. <laughs> Ice washed. Mbappe better. All right. Uh, gonna be cutting over here in three, two. Hey, and welcome everyone back for Summit Esports broadcast of this best of three today between Disco Spiders and Corporate Budget Cuts. The series is sitting at one to one, and we're here for the final game to decide it all. And I'm here joined with Claire. My name is Ferris Claire. We got ourselves what looks like, at least from the draft, a spicy game number three here on deck for us. Uh, what are you feeling? Or how are you feeling about this game and what's going to go? I mean, I'm us? excited. I just really like the Disco Spiders composition and what they're making happen here, oh, which is an invade, see an invade. A very yeah. fast invade. Zeri burning that flash and trying to escape, but actually able to make it happen. The Disco Spiders are going to be pretty... Uh, probably sad about that one not being yeah. able to find that zeri but i hate when my oh i, th <laughs> I thought we were saying uh we're, they're gonna be sad about burning both sums on the enemy bot I, but yeah the prize of the kill was not earned but double sums burned on a weak early game champion like the zeri something that can be exploited well at least not as easy when your jungler is lilia and does struggle to gank pre-6 there's not a whole lot of setup there but maybe even in the two versus two vein is very mobile they can look for something there but definitely going to be something that the disco spiders are going to look to exploit here at the start of the game excellent usage of the invade here to kick themselves off yeah, the Disco Spiders are going to be having a real uh, aggressive bot lane. Uh, as you said, that's already having none of those uh, summoner spells, but it could be a slow early game as they don't have uh, too much dive potential, but Vayne can make something happen. The Vayne and Braum bot lane, uh, you never know. Um, but let's just to see what happens, see how it plays out, um, and... Yeah, you have a champion like Vayne who's so quick to stick to you with that passive movement speed and those tumbles. And if there's a Braum passive sitting here on the likes of a Zeri who does not have summoner spells, it can get dangerous if they are too far up in the lane. Same thing with the Taric as well. Sunny Blue's piloting this champion. A, something that can't really sit from range and be effective and so gonna have to get right up in the face of that Vayne and that Braum definitely will be a tough task I also want to look at this top lane matchup I was very excited when the Urgot lock got locked in because it's such an effective champion into these melee champs like Orn and Jax and all of these uh, champions that want to get aggressive onto you in the melee range, while well, Urgot is perfectly fine with that and can cause you absolute havoc, especially post six with access to the ultimate, which can execute you from about 25% HP. I want to see how much value they can get from this pick in this game. Yeah, just seeing that Urgot, which is not a super duper common pick, but I have seen X ray or like heard that X ray has been is an Urgot, not main, but very comfortable on that pick and seeing this skirmish here in the mid lane see a 2v2 here inside of the mid lane it was Shinez and cisco trying to get aggressive onto pyrosis here on the silas but fortunately it was solpan who is here on the lilia inside of the river forcing away the flash uh, on the sejuani so that's going to be a away from the arsenal of the jungler here for the side of cbc for the next five minutes and it looks like in the CS department, the Lilia already starting to pull ahead. The Scuttle Crab was just secured for Sedge on the top side, but Lilia will counter that cross map with a Scuttle Crab of her own. And when you're playing a champion like Lilia, you focus less on ganks and more so to hit level six as fast as possible. You're a farming jungler. You want to get all that golden experience into your back pocket as quickly as you can. So we'll have to see how well she can pull ahead of this Sejuani, but we have to focus now on the top lane. X-Ray gonna flash away. Shinez, you have to be careful. You have no flash, my friend but thankfully gets the first blood before the Urgot trade. So it's going to be a 100 gold advantage for the side of CBC. But nonetheless, the trade kill comes in. Urgot won't be feeling too sad about that one. Yeah, getting that um, 
especially since Sejuani didn't have her flash. Uh, that's going to be quite detrimental as Lily is just, I mean, she is on the map and she was on the map faster uh, than that Sejuani. So she's going to be getting a little bit more farm, a little bit more levels up and getting closer and closer to that R that you keep mentioning so she can gank a little bit easier uh, and just hopefully secure kills with her R. Yeah, and I do favor, at least in the kill trade, the Disco Spiders composition here because that kill went on to the Urgot and can abuse that extra gold uh, better in the one versus one against the Orn rather than the Sedge can use up against the Lilia. I mean, Sedge with that extra gold can use that extra statistic strength in the ganks and such things, but I think it's just a little bit more effective in that 1v1 is Pyrosis is getting absolutely slammed there in the 1v1 by Cisco, but flash forward here from Soulpan, flash away from Cisco into the play, goes Chinez in the flash away there from Pyrosis. I think Soulpan has what they need to finish off this kill that is going to be the first kill of the game for that Lilia. Chinez can do nothing to help out their mid laner. Pyrosis was so low at the start of that play, but with the flash is able to evade death and get the plus one fight there for the side of the disco spiders is now plants and poros getting aggressive in the bot lane but that's just going to be a little bit of poke we have a two to one kill score here six minutes into the game yeah looking at this map that dragon just coming up about 50 seconds ago and as we look at this bot lane not too much has happened is uh, looking at the farm and what's happening with the kills it's looking incredibly even no real advantages being seen quite yet we do have this ergot invading oh that top side jungle yeah that's so mm. annoying resetting the gromp it's an excellent play from x-ray just to be a disruptor when your lilia is already outpacing the enemy jungler like this 39 cs to 28 just resetting a buff like that sets back the sedge so much in the jungle tempo so we're gonna see the lilia hit six before the sejuani already level five to four as we see a call the forge god coming through that's gonna land on x-ray because cisco has moved right up here from the mid lane the miasma going to prevent x-ray from moving any further and the poison's going to be enough oh no dv you've went way too far but fortunately you're full hp and not going to blunder your life away underneath the turret an excellent run from cisco but then the trade is in because that means pyrosis is getting plates there for free inside of that mid lane as we see now a 2v2 here on the bot side ignite going down but flash forward from proton plat player exhaust goes down from plants and poros that's not really going to deny a whole lot of damage things getting really mixed here on on that lilia. Maps. yeah look at that lilia she is behind them right now could be having a pretty great gank yeah and that does be, good. be the case that uh does still have flash there on the Terex, so nothing will be found but that Lilia did invade pretty far into that uh, blue side jungle, so Sejuani already pretty far behind. I mean, not like super duper far behind, but 12 CS at uh, 7 minutes is not entirely what you want to see. And that Lilia does have that um, Dark Seal, so and she's just going to keep getting stronger. Lilia, when she gets going especially post six can start to run over the skirmishes i'm not sure if you've ever suffered from fed lilia before but i certainly have they run around the map with 10 trillion movement speed they are slaughtering your team left right and center and if you have a support like a sedge you can't really keep up with it as now we see the ultimate from x-ray here in the top side going to come through but unfortunately not able to drop the hp bar of the orn quick enough to get the execute in so gonna win out in the trade at least and push that orn down towards the turret we can already start to see the ergot really start to win out in these one versus ones is two deaths but still holding nicely in the top lane yeah that ergot is just being such um a pain for this uh orn just trying to get some poke damage especially with that range that the ergot has it's not much range but it's still enough to be pretty obnoxious looking exactly. at this bottle uh looking again at this bot lane it's just so even it's kind of like a mirror on the stats if you look at it it is just so close but those other lanes are um i mean this game overall is insanely close no dragon has gone down yet and that rift herald has gone up uh, in this past minute but i don't know if we'll see anything looking at some some fights they kind of looked like they wanted to fight up there in that top side jungle but uh deciding to not want to do that yeah. The Sejuani is just pretty, uh, not like weak, but 
compared to the Lilia and how much damage she can output, uh, it is not super duper strong. Yeah, so forcing away their opponents from that Rift Herald are the Disco Spiders. And with the strength of that Lilia and also the Silas who had the first roam there, able to force away their opponents and secure that objective for themselves as now we see a 1v1 in the top side call of the forge god going to come through it's an early flash from x-ray to call the forge god does land dv trying to land in that last bit of damage x-ray is out of mana just get out of there buddy and let your lilia finish off the kill no gonna be a one for one i believe no flash on this or and there's no chance of escaping from this quick little pony here or I don't even know what to call it. It's half human, half pony. But nonetheless, cross map Pyrosis gets active in the bot side. And they find the first kill here of the bot area of the map. The Taric will drop and Silas will get that kill credit. So two for one in the entire map play here for the side of Disco Spiders. Bills up three for four. Still uh, pretty close. But Lilia being able to get that Rift Herald is going to be super impactful on whichever lane that she chooses to use it. It could be a mid lane, seeing if they want to try and get that Drake, but just create some mid pressure, then go down, grab that Drake. Could be a pretty smart play, or really, you never know what could happen. Uh, this bot side, looking at some action. Uh, that Vayne and that Braum both getting one assist uh, onto that Taric, so looks like they might up, uh, up and start this dragon. We do have uh, five people here, so... That does seem to be a pretty good idea. Yeah, there's really... I mean, they moved X-Ray down on this Urgot to secure this and has the Unleashed Teleport to get down to the top lane without losing a whole lot. We see a Petrifying Gaze from Cisco down onto Pyrosis, who is threatening that 1v1 play there. And this was a great roam from the Urgot. So you have a wave that's stacking up towards you, so that gives you time while the wave is slow pushing for you to go help your team down at the Drake. Orin's not there to contest, so it's five versus four. You're already relatively ahead with your jungler. There is no contest needed. You secure the Drake, get right back up to the top side, collect all that farm. Nice movement around the map. Great macro from the Disco Spiders to collect that first neutral objective or that first dragon at the very least of the game for themselves. Yeah, it's just how the Disco Spiders are moving around the map is pretty, pretty smart, especially with that Lilia, just being able to outpace that Sejuani and beating them to objectives and beating them into, like, ganking lanes is just so impactful. And, like, I don't think uh, uh, CBC has really figured out what they want to do against that, since she can be everywhere at once, but Sejuani is just a little bit slower and cannot quite match that. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, it's all about tempo, right? And now almost down 20 CS is this Sejuani, and Lilia is so quick around the map with this passive movement speed. Now going to get active down here in the bot side, probably going to drop this Rift Herald. They could do this to get some gold into their Vayne's back pocket, but would actually share it amongst the three other members. But you're going to use this time to push in the wave. Yes, the Rift Herald is actually going to go down. They could potentially threaten a dive. I mean, that wouldn't be very wise into a Taric who can just press R. So I think they're just going to use this to get some gold into their laner's pockets. It's a nice little influx, I suppose. Uh, nothing else really other than that. They chip down some plates. And maybe if they knock down this bot lane turret, they can soon move that vein towards the mid lane and get Silas into the side lane. As now we see a play here in top side. Call of the Forge God gets the knock up onto X-ray. The Arctic Assault from Chinez follows it up. Permafrost is in. That's all the crowd control that's needed with no flash available. X-ray has no way out. Yeah, X-ray being uh, all four of the Disco Spider's deaths is not what you want to see, but really X-ray has just been getting pummeled by like their mid, Ooh. this Cassiopeia, and this... Yeah, we got a flash oh, lightning cool. crash here from Proton. Plat player, the Condemn is in, and now here comes the Terrick Ultimate. It's going to land here, and Space Murph will drop. Unfortunately, it's to the support. The flash stun onto Soul Pan, who gets knocked up by the Orn, who is teleported into the fight. Soul Pan's going to flash away, going to try and kite this one out. Does land that Q, and watch this Lilia. She's very fast and will have a very easy time kiting out this fight, continuing to apply stacks of the passive, and in goes Soul Pan once again, finding the kill onto Proton. Plat player plants and Proros trying to help out their jungler but unfortunately overextends in the process an excellent teleport from dv followed by a nice heads up play from proton to flash lightning crash and get aggressive onto the vein net some more kills in favor of the corporate budget cuts here corporate budget cuts just finding the kills when they need them they are finding insanely smart kills and like smart plays uh, they are using quite a bit uh, of their summoner spells. As you can see, that Orn did TP into that bot lane to help uh, secure that fight. But 
I mean, they have been getting these kills and getting this value across the map, so that is super duper important. Here we see this, um, um why can't I remember his name? Uh, oh my goodness. Uh, we see that top laner getting, we're about to see a massive power spike there, so watch out for that. And we brought the Glacial Prison going to land, at least he was the heist of Glacial Prison at least, and Cisco forced to use the flash to get away from that gank. You're right, Claire. That Orn is getting quite strong, but 300 gold bounty on DV's head. So something to look out for if you are the Disco Spiders, especially for the likes of the Vayne and the Lilia. But you have a team filled with pretty much four different champions, excluding the Braum, that can actually pop off if gold and resources are given to them i mean i think i've been slammed by all four of these champions in a solo queue game at least like three or four times before so really getting that bounty onto anyone other than the brahm is going to be beneficial to you so that's one of the plus sides of having a composition that is built around four champions that can really pop off you lack a little bit of front line but if you can play the fights accordingly just peel your vein let lilia run around and kite out the fights and play it slow you can still find value here so uh that'll be something to look for towards the mid to late game fights but now heading in towards the mid game something nice to look for 100 percent. i we see uh this lily and the silas top side potentially looking to get that rift herald uh choosing not to but it is still a point of interest on the map. We did see that Cloud Drake come up, so definitely might see uh, either that Sichuani try and get in there, just because this boss fight does have a lot of pressure on that bot, uh, or that turret, so definitely could have a lot of like room to work with right now. Yeah, and looks like they're going to be able to take this Cloud Drake uncontested. The cross map might come through. Uh, Soul Pan is on the opposite side of the map, and now that he sees through the announcement that the Drake has been taken, probably will start up this Rift Herald on the mini map. It looks like him and X Ray are going to do this and successfully take it, as there really isn't any other corporate budget cut members in the area to contest this. And the game will kind of slow down a little bit in pace for the moment. Now all neutral objectives have been taken off the map. And we have about three minutes until the Baron goes live. But I don't think we'll see any early Barons in this game as both of these teams are playing more to that later stage of the game. They have Vayne, they got Zeri, Lilia, Cassiopeia, Ornaments will come through later on. I think this game, Claire, is going to go the entire distance. Yeah, I don't think we're seeing like a like a 20 minute game or like a 20 even 25 minute game. I definitely think 30 plus for sure. As both these teams just want to scale up, want to try and get as strong as they can before they get into any fights. Um, just looking at this top lane, this poke damage coming through, but oh. what a great uh, permafrost there. Yeah, the glacial prison just hit through the flash, so not really any counterplay that X Ray can try and use after that happens and a fifth death for this guy yeah so the only or all five deaths here for the side of or actually sorry not all five deaths i was looking at the wrong thing but can't be talking about that now because we got to play in the bot side terracult going to come down and make these players invulnerable but excellent kiting here from the squad of disco spiders and i was wondering why they backed away from that and that's because the teleport from cisco came through so no kills going to go over to either of these teams in this bot lane play but summoner spells and key abilities like the Terrak ultimate going to be committed here in this play yeah just like you can probably hear those uh, those comms coming from the side of the uh, cbc saying that like telling that um cassiopeia that is a great time to tp seeing if they can get a pick but couldn't quite find one which is uh, okay it's gonna be whatever you know it happens you can't always get the pick that you're looking for but this Silas deciding to take up this top lane position uh, against this Orn as top and mid decide to switch lanes. Looks yeah. like we... Oh, we see a flash forward here. The Condemn pushes away Proton Plat player away from Space Murph, who's going to be running away with Blinking HP Bar. That's going to be Outer Turret dropping now in the bot lane. No, corporate budget cuts grabbing that turret for themselves. So that will be turret number two for them inside of this yeah, just... game. Deciding to swap turrets here. Disco Spiders did use that Rift Herald to secure that top, uh, I mean that mid lane turret, my apologies. 
but right now it just seems that they're just slowing the game down, trying to get the, some values, some vision, maybe some wards deep into some jungle, uh, get some farm, you know, not do anything too crazy. I don't think we're looking at any picks right now. It does seem that most people's alts are up. As we can there see this Ornold in here now. The Forge God, it knocks up Cisco and Ingo's plants and Poros as well. The CC is there and the pullback is in. The Urglot gets the execute but may trade his life as well. Look at Proton Plat Player sitting nicely inside of this backline completely untouched. This is going to be two for one as Soulpan goes in with the flash and that's going to be a three-man stun. Can they find the kill onto this area? Yes, they can. Space Murph gets credit for that and now I think this fight is going to be all for the Disco Spiders as they have the chase. Look at this vein going absolutely ballistic. Pyrosis forcing the flash from DV4 but they're going to continue to go forward but you've gone too far you get the one kill onto the Sejuani but the vein will drop DV4 on a rampage what a chaotic fight here inside of the mid lane lots of uh, good plays going down for both of these teams. We might not be done yet. Here is now the Lily going to be caught up here. The Ignite going down. DV4 is popping off the Searing Charge. Finds the knockoff. And Sunny Blues is there with uh, the support. But the Ignite actually, I think, is going to drop that Ornn. As we're not done yet, it simply never ends. Pyrosis looking for the 1v1 against the support mid versus Sup. And now Cisco off the respawn with the Miasma and the Poison. Commits the flash but doesn't get the kill. There's so much to unpack here, Claire. It just so much. I think that was a 4 for 4. I think it was completely even. It didn't seem that the Disco Spiders were going to go in too far, but we still have this fight here. Yep, we see a petrifying just... gaze slows down Cisco. The Everfrost root lands, but now the Miasma prevents the Silas from pursuing any further. Finds the maximum range abduct onto the Cassiopeia and Cisco making critical mistakes, throwing their life away twice now. And this is bad right before the second Drake spawns. I mean, actually, there's still quite a little bit of time before that gets down onto the map. So Cisco will probably be able to respawn and teleport back in time. Now 20 seconds left on that objective as, yeah, things getting so aggressive around this mid lane. It's like a, a volcano has erupted and the tension has broken. Yeah, just so much happening on the side of... Oh my goodness. I mean, they're just so <laughs> putting on a massive pick. Another fight happening right outside the Baron Pit. Yeah, we right, see the, the dragon break pit. out again, and that's the Terracult coming down. This time around, it's corporate budget cuts who have the advantage. Space Morph trying to run away from the Zeri, who's completely untouched in the back line. It's a double kill for the Sedge. Unfortunately, the AD carry of CBC is not able to pick up these kills. That might hurt them later on in this game. But right now, they have priority over this Infernal Drake. And I thought this would go over to Disco Spiders. We have a teleport coming through from Cisco, who's going to commit this to secure the objective. They want it. Looks like they're going to get it. Maybe now, Claire, we get a breather from all the action. Just so much happening right outside this, like, this uh, dragon pit. And just a lot of kills going down with no value really gotten from the Disco Spiders from those kills. But that they did pick up there, but... And that should not be looked at as quite like a, you know, they just didn't quite get the the value from them. But what we have seen in these past two team fights is just how strong those Cassiopeia and that Zeres both are. They just both deal an immense amount of damage, and I don't think uh, the Disco Spiders can really deal with that too much. They don't really have super tanky characters besides, of course, that Brom. Uh, that Urgot is a bit tanky, but. Mm, can still easily get shred through by that Zeri with that uh, IE in that Cassiopeia that does and, poison damage. Yeah, and I want to point out the itemization that Zeri has made. Infinity Edge in this game is so much better than Navori Quick Blades. The reason being is there's no major frontline champion for the side of Disco Spiders, so you don't necessarily need all those abilities to be used quicker you just need more upfront damage and now with the infinity edge in your pocket plus the ornament upgrade you can i mean we talked about this claire you were mentioning it, it earlier the cast and the zeri are doing boatloads of damage and i think part of that reason is because of a smart itemization there from uh proton plat player on the zeri the infinity edge is an excellent choice in this game and it's what's bringing a lot of success here for them inside of this game compared to right now space murph on this vein who's still yet to finish off that mythic soon to do so which looks like it's going to be the trinity force that will be in for this vein this vein really trying to get activated is a bit further behind than that zeri with the amount of gold that they have but still definitely not out of it this game is very close and could go either way as we do see this baron up so that is an objective that both teams are going to want to fight for i don't think we'll see anyone go for it quite yet they'll probably be looking for a pick before 
Uh, I, both teams will be looking for a pick before they even go and attempt at this Baron, but I don't quite know if that will happen quite yet. Yeah, probably won't just be a Baron Forces. We're seeing really aggressive trading here down in this bot side. I think this is the smart choice. Typically, you want to Silas up against the likes of an Orn, who you're better suited against, but that Orn is so strong, doing so very well against the Silas in the one versus one as Plants and Poros caught out there inside of the top side jungle there for Disco Spiders, forced to use the Glacial Fissure and the Flash to escape. So these are key abilities from this Braum that are going to be down for the next potential fight that will happen around this Baron, which is being prioritized here for both of these squads. Pyrosis getting aggressive onto DV4. Now with Conqueror popped, Everfrost, Root lands the Ignite taking down onto this Orn, who does not have a bounty on their head, but this would be an excellent point uh, an excellent pick for them but now the baron has been started down to about 4,000 hp this is corporate budget cuts going in the spite oh. goes down for soul pan but an excellent petrifying gaze might just seal the deal in the fight for the side of uh, corporate budget cuts the steel is in but the fight is won here from cbc an excellent call of the forge god space morph canceling the searing charge with the condemned cleanse away from the stun but i don't think the kite will be enough to get away doing their very best but dv will definitely chase down this kill all the way to the end unless they eventually give up searing charge to try and close the gap but space murph is so difficult to catch this vein but i mean the smite went down the xp and gold go in favor of disco spiders but the fight win goes to cbc uh disco spiders i think the only two that were able to keep that baron buff was space murph and pyrosis uh which is still incredibly important as those two still have it but the three going down is just a little bit unfortunate but an insane play from Sulpen to be able to flash that wall and then smite uh, the Baron just in time to be able to capture it for their team. We do see that this uh, the, next, the next objective going up was going to be this Infernal Drake. Not quite on soul point yet for either team, but still incredibly important for both teams to capture. Yeah, and I think the better play for Disco Spiders would have been to just get soul panda flash in go for the steel and then just get out there's no need to fight your lilia's way out of position she's gonna die immediately then you're gonna lose the fight so just get everyone out of there sacrifice your lilia that would have been a very worth trade baron for your jungler 100 percent always going to be worth it but losing the majority of your members there in the fight and then also losing your tier two inside of the mid lane that kind of sucks is could potentially see a one versus one here in the top lane x-ray and cisco going to go at it if x-ray does find that uh that yes this ability whatever it is gets the ultimate down cisco trying to flash away x-ray trying to do the damage to finish off that kill but the call of the forge got here from dv who's here to help out his mid laner they finish off that kill or actually maybe they don't the uh, auto attack was not in just yet but the searing charge will finish that one off but in the meantime with the uh, commitment to the top side from cbc it's disco spiders that start up this drake i think they're going to be able to secure that for themselves yes they will two to two is now the drake score inside of this game yeah, as you can see here, this um, Silas uh, and that Urgot, uh, I did not realize that Urgot still had that uh, dragon buff, but having those super minions or those Baron buffed minions with you on that side lane creates such a big problem for the, the team having to deal with it since they're just so tanky and deal so much damage to structures. So being able to split with those is just so nice. Uh, and that Silas is uh, loves to split push, so you might see that in that top lane. Uh, and whichever lane they go to. Yeah. It does seem that yeah, they want to collapsed on. Here soon. Collapsed on. Yeah, Pyro says, if you get out of this one alive, I don't know. Uh, I'll shave my head bald or something. So Pyros is going to pop the lightning crash that was heisted away, the flash away from the CC here, but going to be locked up by the Glacial Prison, and in comes Pluroton uh, Plat player as well. The Cassiopeia secures that kill, getting too aggressive inside of the side lane, not... Uh, checking where the opposing team was on the map and punished for it is pyrosis we do see that the score is 18 to 10 with the kills favoring the cbc uh but it is still a pretty close game it is about like 2k gold lead for the cbc but um anything can happen i think both fights are still very winnable for both teams depending on how they play in the team fight um I mean, that Silas is super strong, uh, unfortunately is dead right now, so not going to be too useful while they're respawning, but uh, once they come back up, they do do a lot of damage, and I don't think we've seen the Disco Spiders quite yet have a 5v5 team fight. 
I could be mistaken, but I cannot recall one. At least not one that goes absolutely in their favor. But we're going to get a few of those. And right on cue is the call of the Forge God. Now on to X-Ray goes the entirety of the Corporate Budget Cut Squad. Tarek Alt now going to be popped. And that's the cue for them to push forward in this fight because they cannot take any damage. Shinez doing a great job of tanking up at the front line as well as DV4. And look at this Zeri pumping out so much damage in this back line in tandem with the Cassiopeia. That's going to be the tier two and the top lane secured for themselves. And as well, they get the kill down onto X-Ray, who's been struggling to tank up for their squad here in this game. The Radiant Virtue complete the Bramble Vest too, but it's not quite enough to stop the likes of the Zeri and the Cassiopeia. We haven't quite seen this vein get activated quite as much as that Zeri. That Zeri, like every fight that I've seen her in, it's just been so much damage, so much consistent damage coming from them. But the vein, I can't say I've seen as much. So hopefully we do see this happen. That Zeri is an item ahead. Um, about like half an item, I think. So it's a bit stronger, but hopefully we can see this vein get activated in these team fights. Hopefully it can get set up by the Urgot and the Braum and the Lilia. But who and really that's, knows? That's the exact problem is... Like you said, she needs to get set up by the Urgot, the Lilia, and the Braum. But those champions don't set up very well. Braum is a peel-oriented champion. Maybe a nice Glacial Fisher can get things going. We'll talk about this in a second here as DV is now in trouble. The slow land, Soul Pen has that Rylai's Crystal Step there to keep this Orn in place. But the Call of the Forge God plus the Teleport may just turn the tide here for the Corporate Budget Cuts top laner. In goes Cisco now into the fight. The Sleep going to go down onto the Cassiopeia. And now we have a fight in the mid lane as well. This is going to be the fight that could potentially end the game. But look at Space Burf inside of the back line. This could be the setup that you were talking about here, Claire. And now the kill goes over to Soul Pen. It's a one for one on this bot side. The mid lane fight looks like has fizzled out into a stalemate. The Zeri trying to get back to help out this Orin Soul Pan slowly but surely whittling through this Orin. But now that Proton Plat players made their way through, they might be able to find the kill onto the Lilia, but she's just too fast. And now the kill, the yip shut down onto the Orin from the Vade. Pyrosis on the flank finishes off the Zeri. This is the fight that you wanted, Claire, for this uh, Disco Spider squad, and you have gotten it yeah seeing that that fight like two fights breaking out this at the same time one in mid and we saw one in the bot lane there and just like that lilia being able to kite so much damage and survive is super duper crucial and we might just see them yeah, go this, they, straight they to end. the end i think they can end i don't think there's anything that they can really do cisco is going to there's have to go absolutely ballistic here six seconds on the respawn Tarek popping the ultimate but you're only keeping yourself alive my friend you don't have the damage to stop this this is the wildest ending ever out of nowhere this is so anticlimactic it looks like certainly the way things were going this was going to be a cbc win but the throw is here Oh, that's such a bad situation for them. Corporate budget cuts end up losing this game off of one unfortunate fight. It was going so well, Claire, until it wasn't. I mean, that's leak for you. I mean, usually most of the time the games are pretty snowballed and kind of decided at 15 minutes or so. But this game, we just kept going back and forth and back and forth. And the Disco Spiders played their cards right and managed to find the perfect time to end that game. Yeah, they took a gamble on that final fight and they paid in, they got the maximum payout. They basically won the lottery with it. But for us here at Summit Esports, that is going to do it for today's stream. If you're watching, I hope you very much enjoyed it. They were some exciting games. I certainly enjoyed it. My name is Ferris. That was Claire. We'll see you in the next one. Have a wonderful night. Nice. 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 Yeah, um, really good job. Uh